So it appears that my previous video that I did responding to Presh Tallwalker on 60 divided by 5 parentheses 7 minus 5 and parentheses has uh, recently gotten quite a bit more popular. When I did my 100 subscriber video, I had pointed out that it was my second most viewed video at the time. Well, now it is my most watched video. I've gotten several views over the past 10 days. So I wanted to go through really quick. This will be my third video on the subject, but the other videos focus more on the order of operations. For this one, I want to discuss, as you can see, the importance of the law of distribution. So first of all, what is the law of distribution? Simply put, the distributive law is the law that governs how multiplication is distributed through addition. Now that sounds complicated, but it's really not. Symbolically, it is represented by the formula a parentheses b plus c and parentheses equals a b plus a c. As you can see in this, we have addition, the b plus c, and we have a multiplying through that. And what this tells us is that a parentheses b plus c, when we distribute the a through b plus c, we get a b plus a c. So let's demonstrate how this works. Take again our formula a parentheses b plus c and parentheses equals a b plus a c. Let a equals two, b equal four, and c equal three. When we substitute those in, we can see that we have two parentheses four plus three and parentheses equals two times four plus two times three. That's the same thing as two being distributed through seven or two multiplied by seven and eight plus six. Both of those equal 14. So this means we can add values in the parentheses first or we can multiply them separately and then add them together. And we will always have the same answer. That's what the law of distribution guarantees us. For example, let's consider seven explicitly multiplied into the quantity four plus six. So if we use normal PEMDAS rules, first we solve inside the parentheses. That would be seven times four plus six equals seven times 10. Then we multiply those together, seven times 10 equals 70. That's very simple and straightforward. But we can also distribute seven through the term four plus six first. So seven times the quantity four plus six is the same thing as seven times four plus seven times six. That's 28 plus 42. Then we add those together, 28 plus 42 equals 70. So note that you can distribute whether there is an explicit multiplication sign or not. In seven times the quantity four plus six, the seven is distributed exactly the same way as the seven in seven parentheses, four plus six, n parentheses is. Because the terms being added are grouped together, but distribution involves multiplication, this is why parentheses can be viewed as implicit multiplication. And that is key. Implicit multiplication comes because of the law of distribution. It's not a magic thing that just appeared out of nowhere. There is a reason that we use parentheses as multiplication. It's because of distribution. Let's examine the inverse of distribution. This would be factoring. If a value has been distributed through a term, you can undistribute it through factoring. For example, 35 minus 25 can be rewritten as five parentheses, seven minus five and parentheses. When this is done, we say that five is factored out of the term 35 minus 25. Since numbers can be solved normally, this is more commonly done with variables. For example, AB plus AC equals A parentheses B plus C and parentheses. Here, A is factored out of the quantity B plus C. So when factoring, it's key to note, no operation is added between the factor and the term that was factored. So 35 minus 25, when five is factored out, is shown as five parentheses, seven minus five and parentheses, not as five times the quantity seven minus five. This is important to know. This is done to preserve the fact that five is a factor of the term in the parentheses, allowing us to redistribute the factor if we wish. If we didn't do that, there could be confusion and ambiguity that would arise. Therefore, even though in isolation, the equation five parentheses seven minus five and parentheses gives the same result as five times the quantity seven minus five, the two are not identical. 5 parentheses 7 minus 5 and parentheses shows 5 is a factor of 7 minus 5. 
five times the quantity seven minus five does not indicate that it is a factor. This is shown in the symbolic description of the law of distribution as well. A parentheses B plus C and parentheses equals AB plus AC. That is the definition. It is not written as A times the quantity B plus C equals AB plus AC. So how can we use the law of distribution? Consider the following equation. AB minus A parentheses B plus C and parentheses. How would you go about solving this one? If you are using only the rules of PEMDAS, there's nothing else you can do with this. But if you realize that you can do distribution, you can do the following. This can be solved to show that AB minus A quantity B plus C and parentheses equals negative AC. So here's the proof of that. AB minus A parentheses B plus C and parentheses equals negative AC. This is what we're going to prove. Distribute negative A through the term B plus C. That gives us AB minus AB minus AC. The AB terms cancel out, leaving us with negative AC. This can be proven by substituting values. So let A equal two, B equal three, and C equal four. We can show AB minus A parentheses B plus C and parentheses equals negative AC. So we substitute in, we get two times three minus two parentheses three plus four and parentheses equals negative two times four. This is what we're, our expected result will be. So when we start simplifying, we get this. Six minus six minus eight equals negative eight. And negative eight does in fact equal negative eight. You can even solve the value in the parentheses first and use PEMDAS. So again, let a equal two, b equal three, and c equal four, and we'll show the same thing. Two times three minus two parentheses three plus four and parentheses equals negative two times four. So this we can simplify by saying six minus two parentheses seven equals negative eight. That's the same thing as six minus 14 equals negative eight and negative eight once again equals negative eight. So we can see these are equivalent. So what conclusion do we have here? The reason parentheses can be treated as implicit multiplication is because distribution is done as multiplication distributed through addition. This means that the formulas with parentheses are not showing multiplication themselves, they are showing distribution by that parentheses. The vast majority of the time, your answers will be identical whether you treat the parentheses as explicit multiplication and use the rules of PEMDAS, or if you treat the parentheses correctly as distribution. However, division is not distributive. This is key. Multiplication is distributed in that A parentheses B plus C M parentheses equals A B plus A C, and that's the law of distribution. Division is not, because it's not always true that A divided by parentheses B plus C and parentheses equals A divided by B plus A divided by C. We can prove that's not the case by letting A equal two, B equal one, and C equal three. This gives us two divided by one plus three, the quantity one plus three, equals two divided by one plus two divided by three. That would be two divided by four equals two plus two thirds. And two and two thirds is six thirds plus two thirds, which is eight thirds. This is saying one half equals eight thirds. That is false. So division is not distributive. Because division is not distributive, then formulas involving division will have different answers depending on the order in which terms are calculated. The order operation should be done in is set by convention as the order of operations, commonly referenced with the mnemonic PEMDAS in the United States. Conventions, however, are not the same thing as mathematical laws. Conventions can change through time. Not only that, PEMDAS is incomplete. It does not tell you when to do factorials, for example, nor does it mention distribution. Parentheses are not operations. They are grouping symbols. An equation such as five parentheses, seven minus five n parentheses has only one operation, the subtraction in seven minus five. The implicit multiplication, again, that the parentheses takes is only because of distribution. Again, distribution is not part of the order of operations listed in PEMDAS. 
Distribution is one of the three fundamental laws of mathematics, however. The other two are the associative and communicative laws. As such, anything involving distribution should take precedence over any order of operations conventions. Laws take precedence over conventions. Therefore, when examining the original equation, there is only one answer we can give. 60 divided by 5 parentheses 7 minus 5. The 5 parentheses 7 minus 5 end parentheses has no operation between 5 and 7 minus 5. 5 is therefore a factor of the grouping 7 minus 5. Therefore, 5 must be distributed back through the grouping first. That gives us 60 divided by 35 minus 25. 35 minus 25 is 10, so we have 60 divided by 10. The answer is 6. This must be the case because there is no other way to write factors. This is also demonstrated in the very definition of the law of distribution. But if someone wanted to say the equation is 60 divided by 5 multiplied by the quantity 7 minus 5, then one could have written 60 divided by 5 times 7 minus 5. The explicit multiplication sign is 60 divided by 5 times the quantity 7 minus 5 clearly shows that 5 is not factored out of 7 minus 5 because that multiplication is there. If someone still disagrees with me, then they need to establish two important things. One, what reason is there to treat parentheses as implicit multiplication if it's not because it's actually referring to distribution? This isn't just some magical thing that plopped out of nowhere. There's a reason that we can use parentheses as implicit multiplication. That reason I'm saying is distribution, and it makes perfect sense from my argument. But if you're saying it's not distribution, why can parentheses be used as implicit multiplication? Give me a reason that it can be done that way. Two, where else have you ever seen a number that has been factored out of a grouping other than the way 5 parentheses 7 minus 5 end parentheses is already written? If factors can be written in other ways, where are those other ways? Alternative theories to my answer definitely exist. We can see the number of people who disagree with my conclusions. But there's no reason to accept an alternative theory that cannot explain why we treat parentheses as implicit multiplication and that does not contain a way to write factorizations that is consistent with how we use factors everywhere else in mathematics already. So there you go. It's another math rant from yours truly. I do want to add one quick note that uh, while I do disagree with Presh Talwalker on this particular issue, it's really the only video that I've seen of his that I have any disagreement on. I don't dislike Presh at all. In fact, I think he's one of the better math YouTubers out there. That doesn't mean that I'm going to let him slide on something that I think is clearly not correct. That said, since obviously 50% of the people who watch my video have disliked it, then uh, it's going to be a mixed crowd, I'm sure. But that's why I'm so adamant. I have a reason to accept distribution as being why parentheses can function as implicit multiplication. I have a reason to accept that. The other side doesn't have a reason for it. It's just a we declare it to be so type of thing. And math just doesn't work that way. There's reasons why we do what we do in mathematics. I hope this is edifying. I hope it is useful to some people. And I hope at the very least it gives you something to think about, even if you disagree with me on my conclusions. I just don't accept because some teacher said you could do it as an answer. I want to know the reason why. I want to know the reason why. See, that's the thing that frustrated me the most about learning mathematics in high school is that my teachers never explained anything. They just said, do this method and get the result. Why does it give you the result? That doesn't teach you math. That teaches you to do a process. Well, calculators will do that process way better than a human ever could. No, give me the reason why things are done and then I can think about it and then I can rationalize and understand why these numbers go together the way they do and how we can maybe optimize it in the future. So anyway, as I said, I hope that gives you something to think about. And as always, have a wonderful day. Peace out.